Hello, in this video I am going to go through a problem, a standard production theory type problem, in which we're called to find the optimal input mix, or sometimes the cost minimizing input mix. In other words, the firm is deciding to produce a certain amount of output, and it wants to produce that output, that quantity of output at the lowest possible cost. So we're going to try to find a solution to that problem. In this problem we're going to be dealing with a production function of the following form. I'll just write it in general notation here, general functional form. We're going to assume that a firm can produce output Q. Q is just units of output. And units of output are produced by using combinations of labor and capital. L is just units of labor, number of workers, and K is units of capital. We're going to assume that the firm can freely vary the units of labor and capital, so you could view this sort of as a long-run production problem where all inputs can be varied. You may have been presented with the optimal input mix. Uh, the optimal input mix will occur where either, you can write it uh, a couple ways, where the marginal rate of technical substitution equals the relative price of labor, which is given as W divided by R. So let me just maybe write that over here. W is just going to be the wage rate, price of labor and R will be the rental rate of capital or sometimes it's just you know simply the price of capital so we got the price of labor the wage price of capital the rental rate of capital rental rate sorry of capital uh, MRTS is the marginal rate of technical substitution the marginal rate of technical substitution is the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. Let me get a fresh page here. So rewriting the marginal rate of technical substitution as a ratio of the marginal products equals the ratio of the input prices. This condition needs to hold in order for a firm to be producing a level of output at the lowest possible cost. You may be presented with a variation of this. A variation of this would just be uh, rearranging this equation. Uh, dividing through by the wage, multiplying through by the marginal product of capital, get something like this. In either case, uh, these th these uh, these equations need to hold if you're using the appropriate amount of labor and capital. Um, all right, so let's uh, go ahead then and uh, come up with an example. Let's say a production function for a firm is given by. the following production function output equals L to the 0.75 power multiplied by K units of capital to the 0.25 power. This firm decides that it wants to produce a hundred units of output uh, which is its profit maximizing output so let's say this firm figured out that uh, it'll maximize profits by producing hundred units of output. So now the firm's goal is to figure out how to produce that output that 100 units at the lowest possible cost. How is it going to do that? It wants to ensure that either this condition is holding or a variant of that, this condition is holding. A um, little bit other information here. We'll assume that the firm faces a wage in the market of $150, $150 per worker, and then the rental rate or the price of capital is $50 per unit of capital. So you're presented with this basic setup now. We've basically got all the information we need here to figure out the optimal units of labor and capital for this firm to hire. Well, a key thing that we're seeing in these uh, cost minimizing conditions is the marginal product. So that's the first thing I guess we should get is the marginal product of labor and capital. 
the, the marginal product of labor is going to be the partial derivative of this production function with respect to labor. If you need, <coughs> if you need reviews on taking derivatives or partial derivatives, you can see my other videos. Uh, what we're going to get here is the following expression for the marginal product of labor. Okay, so that's the marginal product of labor. Basically bringing, out, bringing down this 0.75 in front of L, and then in this exponent here we got 0.75 minus 1, leaving us with minus 0.25. And let's get the marginal product of capital same idea, different variable. We're going to take the partial derivative of the production function with respect to capital. And we will get the following result. Bringing down the 0.25 in front here, and then we're going to have 0.25 minus 1 for the exponent, so 0.25 minus 1 for the exponent leaves k raised to the minus 0.75 power. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this information from the marginal products and I'm going to set it into our optimization condition. So let's go ahead and do that maybe on a clean page. Whoa. All right, so writing our optimization condition as the marginal rate of technical substitution given by the ratio of the marginal products will equal the relative price of labor or the wage divided by the price of capital. We will go ahead and substitute what we know into these expression, expressions. The marginal product of labor we just solved. equals the following. So we got the marginal product of labor, and that's going to be divided by the marginal product of capital, which is going to be 0.25 times L raised to the 0.75 times K raised to the minus 0.75. The wage was given to us initially at $150, and the price of capital was given to us initially at 50 this kind of looks like a mess, but in many cases these uh, problems will simplify quite nicely. On the left hand side here, uh, 0.75 divided by 0.25 is just 3. Using the rules of exponents, L minus 0.25 divided by L uh, to the 0.75 is just going to be L. So we're just bringing this term down into the denominator and as you know or may have forgotten this will just simply equal oops, the following okay, so just bringing that L to the minus 0.25 into the denominator uh, so we'll have L to the 0.25 in the denominator divided by L to the 0.75 uh, just adding the exponents here you get L and then likewise, let's go ahead and bring this k to the minus 0.75 up over here. And you'll have k to the 0.25 times k to the 0.75, and that'll just equal k. And this will just equal, on the right-hand side here, just equal 3. And this will kind of simplify quite nicely for us. Uh, we'll just get, well, k equals L. So the optimal input mix says we're going to use equal amounts of labor and capital. Again, our goal here is finding the exact amounts of labor and capital. Uh, so in order to do that, we are going to plug this result back into the production function. Uh, the production function over here. Looks something like this. However, we're interested in producing a certain amount of output, 100 units of output, the profit maximizing output. So 
So after substituting 100 in for Q, we got our production function. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, say, well, since K equals L, since K equals L, we're just going to set K equal to L. And we get 100 uh, equals, well, L. So that is the optimal number of workers to hire, units of labor. And since K equals L, from over here, that must mean that K also equals 100. So the ideal way for this firm to produce 100 units of output is, in this case, to use equal amounts of labor and capital. It's not always going to work out like that in this particular problem it did. Uh, and that's basically how you solve one of these standard production problems when you're trying to find the optimal input mix uh, to produce a given amount of output. I hope you found this video helpful.